Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. We have a question today. It's from the text of A Course in Miracles, where it appears in italics, chapter 20, section 3, paragraph 4. Do you like what you have made? Just that. That's the backdrop for our conversation today. Do you like what you have made? Or if you prefer to put a different verb in its place, which you might want to do, do you like what you have wrought? Mm, I know, yeah? Do you like what you have fashioned? It's one of these conversations that goes to the heart of something very true about spiritual practice. It's for grown-ups. <laughs> Isn't it? It's about taking a foundational adult responsibility for our own experience. Uh, something that we're all conditioned to avoid. And along the way, we have to learn as grown-ups, as adult learners, that the way we've been brought up to believe in the concrete reality of things, the supposed order and, well, reality of this spinning ball of rock and these highly fallible things that are running around, 8 billion plus of them, plus all of the other life forms, you know, we're, we're conditioned to believe that this is who we are, this is life. Oh no, well, we all know that it's not. So this is an adult endeavor because we have to look at what we've made with the responsibility and with the honesty to say, no, I don't like it. Now let's back up here. We think here, were raised and conditioned to think that we were born into this world and this spinning ball of rock is home. We have no other option but to get on a spacecraft and go orbit the Earth or something like that. Otherwise, we're here. A period, end of discussion. And uh, yeah, you better make the most of it. Right? That's where we all are conditioned to think that we are. Yeah. So along comes this little practice, A Course in Miracles, which is not little at all, as you may well have discovered. It's fundamentally a game changer by design. Thank God. This world that we appear to inhabit, and as I always do, let me please emphasize the word appear, appear to inhabit. Yes, that insinuates that we're not here. We sure look like we are. This world is not outside us. It's not coming at us, despite all of the phrases that we have in popular culture, that the world's coming at us. Things come at you fast. Well, they don't come at you. They come from you. This world is coming from us. We made it. Do you like what you have made? Again, chapter 20, section 3, paragraph 4. And in case you lose this thread in paragraph four, the question is in italics. We look out and we see violence. We see division and warfare and strife and murder and attack. Do you like what you have made? And you may instantly answer, no. I, I most certainly do not. Or you may think, well, I'm I'm relatively comfortable 
I've got lots of money. You know, I don't have to go off to a job that I hate and toil. And I've got cool threads and a nice fancy bottle of wine and, you know, drive a nice car. And people seem to like me, I think, and stuff, you know. All right, well, let's not get too distracted by that because none of that lasts as beautiful as it is. And I'm definitely not saying don't enjoy it. In fact, last night we opened up a really nice bottle of Left Bank Bordeaux, 2016 Poyac to be exact. Very good year, tasty stuff. It was just perfect. Eight years in the bottle. So we're not saying, don't enjoy life. You don't have to accord it concrete reality. It's something that we learn over time, because it is certainly not ingrained in our upbringings, is it? Where we think, human being, hmm, yeah, individual self-sustaining survival unit, me, me, myself, and I better serve the needs of this human-looking device. <laughs> That's how we do life. So when we look out, even if we're enjoying a peaceful enough lifetime, these moments of peace don't last. The bottle of wine, well, it only has 750 milliliters of liquid in it. It's finite, and it comes to an end. The end was beautiful, but it comes to an end, yeah? That's only one example. Just one of many. This comes to an end, doesn't it? Yeah, Our relationships in the world come to an end. Our work scenarios come to an end, even if they appear fixed and lasting. Boom, all of a sudden, you may get laid off or your position simply vanishes. Like the idea that it actually is. Someone comes up with the idea that, yeah, this doesn't exist anymore. Or poof, bye, right? Nothing lasts. Now, here's something very, very interesting in conjunction with this question that Jesus asks us point blank here in chapter 20 of the text. Do you like what you have made? At some point, you have answered no. And because you're here studying this course, if you're a course student, if you're not a course student, you're watching this video. It's all about A Course in Miracles. That's it. That's all. Yeah. You're interested in it. You're drawn to this. At some point, you've answered, yes, I do not like this. I've an you've answered yes to the Holy Spirit, and you have said to yourself, no, I don't like what I've made. Murder, violence, attack, frustration, guilt, blame, rage, hatred, and fear, sadness, depression, and loneliness. Yeah, waiting, creeping right around the corner. I may be feeling great now, but five minutes from now, something may happen to disturb my supposedly peaceful equilibrium, and I'm back blaming, judging, hating, condemning, and stuff. You have answered that you do not like what you have made. More than once, or you would not be interested in spirituality. We've all done this. If we were aware, consciously aware, of answering that question at the time, great. Sometimes we're not. Yet, we just are drawn to the light. We're drawn to truth. We're drawn to who we are. And we've taken a look at this array of stuff going on. And we've said there's got to be a better way. There must be more to it than just all of this. Yes, there is. Welcome. I invite you to stick around. 
and to put these ideas into practice, where your experience will demonstrate to you, show you, prove to you the truth of what's being spoken in this course. Reality is changeless. It is constant. It is permanent. It is eternal. Any change, any shift at all, any transformation is of the ego. Anything that changes is illusion, in other words. It's not reality. We're, of course, apparently here because we think the exact opposite. So this course, if you're thinking, oh, wow, this is a 180 degree upending of my perception of the way I see things, yeah, it is. We're invited to change our mind completely. The way we look at the world, the way we look at ourselves, the way we look at what we see as other people, animals, other life forms, etc. The way we look at it is completely upside down. We're turning it right side up. Anything that shifts is, in fact, illusion. And how do we begin to realize it? Through the practice of true forgiveness. Now, it's very interesting because forgiveness is an illusion of itself, too. In truth, there's nothing to forgive because you've never left your home in God. Ideas leave not their source. You're an idea. I'm an idea. Your worst political enemy is an idea. Your lover is an idea. We're all ideas. The thought of God, by which we're known here in A Course in Miracles, ideas, thoughts, leave not their source. Capital S. Capital S. Thoughts remain in the mind of the thinker. Where are you? Exactly. This is a dream. Dream image. I mean, it is. It's a dream image. What you're looking at is actually an assemblage of pixels. It's constellated to form this shape of a middle-aged man from Arizona that's got some gray hair and has lost a significant portion of the hair that it once appeared to have as a younger apparent human being <laughs> and stuff, right? It's a form that we can relate to. You might think, well, I don't really relate to you. Okay, no problem. <laughs> That's fine. Something's drawn you here. When something connects or lands for you or gets your attention, however it gets your attention, it's the Holy Spirit. You may 100% count on that. It is the Holy Spirit, especially when something connects for you. Now, very interesting point. The Holy Spirit's part of you. If you ever wondered what this Holy Spirit thing is that people keep talking about, or sometimes they don't really talk about it at all because nobody seems to know what it is, well, it is part of our mind. It is this part of our mind that looks right past the illusion to the truth of what we really are, what your brother really is, what we all really are, and will help you, will guide you to See, truly, should you let it. When you begin to let it, you'll begin to notice you don't see things the way you used to. Very cool. Very powerful. <laughs> Reality, God, truth, love is completely changeless. It's eternal. It's outside space and time, which the rational thinking mind has extraordinary difficulty grasping. In fact, it really can't grasp it. So how do we learn this experience? <laughs> That's how the genius of this course is that it is a self-study curriculum. This pixelated image is not in charge of you, for which it's very grateful. There's no hierarchy here. There's only perfect oneness. We 
allow ourselves to be led by our inner teacher. And we go as far as we find ourselves able or willing, willing, remember adult responsibility, yeah, willing to go on a given day. And then we get up tomorrow and we do the exact same thing and go as far as we're willing to allow ourselves to be led on the very next day. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. That's how we do this. Now, the intellectual thinking mind has plenty of value here in the world where we worship it. I mean, I have one of those expensive degrees that I suffered greatly for, may I say. Perhaps you can relate. It has a D at the end of it and stuff. We, we value and esteem the intellect here in the world. And to understand the teachings here of A Course in Miracles with the intellectual thinking mind has some value, sure, yeah. It's nothing compared to experience because the intellect will try to grapple with and grasp the fact that space and time are complete illusions and we're really outside of it completely, even though we appear to be deep in it, in the thick of it, as the case may be. Yep. We learn by our experience, by doing this course, self-study, self-doing, do it. We learn by doing it. That's when our experience shows us the ideas are true. We experience it and we just know. It's beyond the intellect. It really is. We're invited to give up all of our wild, manic efforts to change reality. Reality is changeless. It cannot be changed. Yet we're deluded in thinking that this world is our reality, so we attempt to change it in many ways. We let that go. One of the most powerful prayers that you could ever utter as you study and practice this course is to ask your inner teacher, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, call it whatever you want to call it. You may call it by multiple different names if you want to. They're only just collections of sounds, a label. It's not the thing that it stands for. So I invite you to not get hung up at all on the verbiage. That is simply something that can delay you. So call the Holy Spirit whatever you want to call it. I mean, call it him, he, him. Sure, no problem. The Course uses that. It's a matter of convention. The Holy Spirit is not a human being. It's a, technically, it's an it, so use that pronoun if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Ask your inner teacher for help in allowing truth to be just as it is. Help me allow truth to be just as it is. Help me to get out of my own way. Help me to set aside my desire to manipulate and order and control all compound phenomena or some such verbiage. You don't have to be that dramatic if you don't want to. Yeah, do as, as you're called to do with that. But it's very powerful because that's what we're all learning to do is allow truth to be just as it is. Something very powerful happens when we really honestly do this is we begin, in fact, to feel lighter. That's the best way that I can think of, really, to describe it. It's as though we had been carrying a heavy satchel or a backpack or a burden on our backs, and we begin to take things out of that satchel. It gets lighter. 
we don't feel as dragged down as we perhaps did. And this progress can seem like it happens in fits and starts, or it can seem incremental or whatever. We simply keep going with it. Do you like what you have made? You made this up. We made this up. The world is coming from us. So when we answer, well, no, I, I really don't like what I've made. I don't enjoy picking up my cell phone and seeing people trolling each other and hating on each other and lambasting one another. I don't enjoy the theater that appears to be here in the world because it's all about conflict, attack, warfare, hatred, blame, and strife. If you think, yeah, I don't really enjoy that, good, right? Here's the stark truth. The world we see as we appear to look outside us is a picture of ourselves. It's a picture of what's going on in our mind. That can be a very sobering detail. It's meant to be. And it's meant to be. That's why this section of the text is so direct with the questioning. We've all been far too tolerant of distraction and wandering and indirectness, of hiding the ball, so to speak, of not really looking at the ego. I mean, just looking at it. and allowing the Holy Spirit to judge for us. Allow the Holy Spirit to decide for you. His decision is always the same. It's always powerful, and it always dismisses illusion and doesn't even look at it. It just goes right past it as though the illusion were never there. Exactly. It's not here. We don't have to accord this drama concrete reality. Yes, we still appear to be living here. And yeah, we, we may have jobs. We've got bills to pay and stuff like that. You know, what we call life to live. And we just, we just do it. We just do it. But you don't have to believe in the concrete reality of all of this psychodrama that appears to surround us. It's coming from us. Forgive anything that is not wholly joyous. Now, of course, a lot of things come from us that are completely joyous, for sure, right? Beautiful sunsets, last night's 2016 Poyak, yeah, left bank, mm, yeah. Joyous things are symbolic of who we really are. They're symbolic of our own beauty, of our own radiance, perhaps. Happiness, joy, lovingness, kindness, limitlessness. Yeah. And then we look out and we're deeply perturbed or offended or challenged. <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of other words that we can use to describe picking up our social media feed and seeing political rants and just hatred for no apparent reason. No. Anything that is not wholly joyous in your experience is a gift. <laughs> Why do I say that? It's an opportunity to forgive. It's an opportunity to practice true forgiveness as it's taught here in this course, where we look beyond illusion to the truth of what is perfect oneness. All while we appear to be here, 
in this form or whatever your outward form looks like, all while we appear to be here doing life, our forgiveness is done in the mind. We, we do it in the mind, and people don't even have to know we're doing it, actually. When you practice it enough, it becomes habit. Hmm, yeah, like anything else. When you do it, consciously do it, and make the effort to do it enough, it becomes habit. If you've ever wondered why meditation practice, why mindfulness practices are a thing in so many spiritual traditions, it is for this reason, so that we may bring our awareness back to what we should be doing. In this case, bringing your awareness back to the breath, as in a conventional seated meditation, bring your awareness back to true forgiveness of the Son of God, the world, space, time, the ego, everything that occurs to you that is not wholly joyous. The more you remember to do it, the better. Present moment awareness. That's why it's a thing. I mean... I remember practicing Buddhism for a number of years and then meditating prior to doing that for a number of years. And there were moments where I sat there thinking, what is the point of all of this? I want to think about tomorrow's lunch. So what? So what if I'm thinking about English class? Yeah. So what if I'm thinking about pizza? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, it's real easy to go there and think, what is the point of all of this? Awakening. Awakening to the truth of who you are. And you most certainly know who that is. Now, we don't have to acknowledge that. We're free to deny all of this. You're free to take a look at this and think, well, I'm real happy I watched this once or, or not, never doing it again. Oh, no problem. We're free to deny this as much as we want, or we're free to embrace it and ask the Holy Spirit for help in allowing truth to be just as it is and to direct and guide our forgiveness. You could try that, and I certainly invite you to. All right. So, Questions are always more than welcome. There have been a number of excellent questions asked right here lately in the comment thread here on YouTube. And it's a very good place to bring up what's coming up for you live. I'm very interested in that. Part of the reason these videos exist in the first place is so that I can serve as a guide for you. And I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. If it seems like it's going to be too long of an answer to type out, what I will most likely do is record a standalone video and publish it right here on this channel addressing that topic in particular. This is a particularly good thing to do. It's a great exercise because if you have a question that's on your mind, you can bet you're not alone. Uh, there are likely plenty of people watching this all over the world that might be wondering the exact same thing. And you could be positively impacting the trajectory of many people whom you're not likely to ever run into in person. I mean, if you do, that's kind of cool. Yeah, but I mean, we're not likely to do that. So questions are, are most welcome. And if you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do that. We'd love to have you join us. This is the prompt, that icon there in the corner of your screen, click it. You'll be invited to subscribe, join us. There are several videos that appear here each week. And well, one of the purposes of that is spirituality is ongoing because we're always going to have that next forgiveness opportunity until we take them all and learn all of our forgiveness lessons. That day may seem like a long ways off, but you can hasten it by forgiving 
right now. Okay. Thank you for joining me.